on a roll, baby. I've been on a roll since, I don't know, noon today, I think. It's pretty good. All right, so this one's gonna be a little birdie that's like trying to mind its business, but can't really mind its business. A little stalk, stalker bird. I feel like it's stalking me. At least that's what it feels like. We'll see if I... If I pull this off. And I apologize for all the noise. Uh, it's just my... My... Uh, hey, what's up? What's up, Christian? Hola. It's just uh, my swamp coolers here in my studios. Yeah, but I was I was talking about some... I, I think some pretty cool stuff earlier. Uh, I don't know how people feel about that, but I was saying that... Uh, cool to me anyways I, I was saying that uh, it's important for artists to be social socially con uh, conscious about what's happening we, we're missing a lot of that I believe we're missing a lot of that an artist was uh, something that that mattered that used to matter you know that used to matter today I don't know if it does so much. But it was important for artists to be uh, involved in, in social justice and that type of deal here. And then there's a there's a, a responsibility from artists. It don't matter what type of artist. And then there's a responsibility to to bring about awareness and awareness. Uh, I think a lot of people, a lot of people have been mistaking this whole idea for, for uh, beauty, art, art being about beauty, and I, I, I think beauty is a byproduct of art. Personally, I think beauty is a byproduct of it. Um, I think art can be beautiful, but it doesn't have to be. Art can be shocking, but it doesn't have to be. And, and I think that people people get this message kind of confused and wrong and so they go into art thinking that oh my god if I just create something beautiful oh well, yeah that, that'd be nice as opposed to something horrible yeah um, but uh, but I think that that's the limitation the limitation of any type of plastic arts, I think, is that we, we go into thinking that it's about beauty, aesthetic beauty, especially. Um, I, I think it goes beyond that. I think it, 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 if the art doesn't touch the, or point to that which cannot be touched, I don't think that it, it did its job. I mean, you could sell it, you could auction it, you could, I don't know. Whether it's on eBay or at Christie's, Sotheby's, whatever, you can exhibit it, whatever. Uh, but if, if it doesn't touch that, 
I think it hasn't done its job. If it doesn't point to that which cannot be touched. And I think there's a responsibility for artists to do that. To be uh, conduits of awareness. in society, right? social awareness. Like I said earlier, when I, you know, usually in the States when you use the word social, people cringe or they think you're talking about something specific. They think you're, you're talking about some sort of uh, economy or government, you know, socialism or something like that. That's not, that's not what I'm, what I'm referring to. I'm referring to the need to be conscious about other people, about society, social awareness, consciousness in society. What does that mean? What, what, why, why have artists throughout history have been condemned as... Especially in, in very in very horrible governments have been condemned to being very dangerous. Artists are very dangerous. Very dangerous people. They they mix with all all people, all all, all members of different of the society. Artists will hang out with politicians, maybe. Artists will hang out with beggars, very wealthy people, sex workers. Artists will hang out with everybody. And I'm not just talking about the, 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 the bohemian lifestyle of the artist, no, just in general. Artists have always been very active in not every artist, of course, but, but, but in general, artists have been very active in the necessities of social consciousness. The fights. One of my favorite Mexican artists is uh, David Alfaro Siqueiros. He, he actually fought in the revolution, the Mexican revolution. Against, uh, against the dictatorship. It was happening. Uh, not, not all artists are revolutionaries, of course. Some of them are. Not all artists are trailblazers either. Some of them are avant-garde, others are not. Others are derivative. But I think they all have a, a responsibility to be for the people. Truly for the people. Not, not for some of the people, but for the people. Especially the most vulnerable groups, those in need. What do I do to paint? Uh, oil. I use oil. It looks like acrylic, huh? Yeah, this is the number one question I get asked. Is it oil or acrylic? Because it, it, it does have that little acrylic feel to it.
I think uh, what has made artists so dangerous throughout history for governments and or, or, or powers in the past it was the church then it was governments which was pretty much the same thing right? it just it just changed the name from it call it so it the government used to call itself church now it calls itself government when it got tired of calling itself monarchy it changed its name it's the same it's the same pile of bullshit it just changes its name And artists have always been um, dangerous to those entities. Always. If you study art, you, you, you realize that. Artists have always been dangerous to all those entities. Why is that? It's not just the free thinking. Some people think it's the free thinking. It's not the free thinking. It, it's, it's easy to think freely. Uh, a lot of people call themselves free thinkers. It's easy to think freely when you're privileged. It's harder to think freely when you're not. It's not the free thinking. It's a very beautiful way to put it. Often I, I talk about it with artist friends and they say, well, it's the free thinking. No, I, today any asshole can think freely. It's not the free thinking. And it was never the free thinking. It was a challenge of the status quo. It wasn't. It wasn't free thinking. It was. A, it was an actual challenge of the status quo. Oh, thank you so much, Christian. Appreciate that. And, and I think that this is what what we don't get. We keep thinking about artists from this uh, nonchalant privileged space. When Picasso painted the women of Avignon, it wasn't free thinking. It wasn't an exhibit of free thinking. It was challenging the status quo of what we consider beauty. When Pollock started throwing paint on the floor, that wasn't free thinking. People confuse those two things. Free, free thinking is... is, is it's shallow, it's as good as it's as good as opinions. Challenging something that hasn't been challenged. And not opposing something that other people are opposing. There's a lot of that today. Oh I'm opposing this because a lot of people are opposing it. Or I'm for it because a lot of people are for it. I'm challenging something that has not been challenged. Either because it hasn't been seen, mainly because nobody wants to challenge, nobody wants to ruffle my feathers. Saludos from Chile. I love that. Muchas gracias. Lo aprecio. Un abrazo desde, desde Arizona. Arizona, los United States. Un artista chileno. Muy bien.
it's it's different from what I normally talk about. Normally, I talk about from a uh, individualistic approach to being an artist. I talk about showing up and marketing. And it's a very individualistic approach, which I love because because we can, right? Because we're able to do that, and it's also a very capitalist approach. Sell your artwork. You have to sell your artwork if you want to make a career out of it. But there's also another side of it that I rarely talk about, and that's what I'm talking about right now. Which is the contribution that artists make and the responsibility that artists have towards social change, social consciousness. Of course, if there's social consciousness, there will be social change. And the most vulnerable groups will have help. There it is. Alright, my friends. Hope you guys like this little birdie.